If you've followed us for any length of time, you know how much we love our Lucas portable sawmill. We also love the planing attachment that goes on it for flattening out big slabs. One of the things that's bad for it is when the slabs contain metal. If you watch this video, I'm going to give you some tips how you can plane and flatten big slabs with metal in them without tearing up your cutter head. Hey buddy, what am I supposed to do with this? Look how big that is. It's solid steel. Charles with Not Head Custom Sawing here and some tips for your Lucas planer attachment. Check it out. How's that for some metal in your walnut slab? There's the slab, 13 feet long, four and a half inches thick. Everything looks good until, bam! You see that? And realized that it's tied to that. That's something big. I ain't gonna be able to get that out. Holy In case you didn't know it, here in California, we do get the opportunity to work with a quite a bit of black walnut. A couple of varieties that we get to work with is Calero black walnut and Bastone black walnut. The trees get pretty large and most often they're yard trees by a home. While that can be a good thing, more often than not, it can also be a bad thing. For some reason, people like to pound things into trees. So more often than not, the yard trees, the closer to the house they are, the more hardware is inside of them. People like to nail things up, screw things up, and in this case, a dog was chained to it. So I want to show you guys with Lucas Mills that use them for planing. Here's a walnut slab. It's a set. This is half of one pair that's going to get book matched together. These are about 36, maybe 40 inches wide. And about, well, we started out about four inches thick. We're a little thinner now. I've already done one side. But for those of you that have, <clears throat> excuse me, for those of you that have planer attachments for your Lucas Mill, we always hate to see this kind of stuff. This is a big piece of chain with a big metal strap right here. And it's attached to this, which is about two inches long. Goes all the way through the slab, comes in here, comes out over here. That's where the chain is. For one thing, I think it's cool as it can be. It tells a story. For another thing, the customer that this log belongs to, or these slabs belong to, a, they're building the table we're building a table for them so this tree came from their property and they still have the dog that they used to chain to this tree with this chain so they would like to leave that in there as a feature on their table and, and part of the story so rather than dig that out and create a big giant hole right here from digging that out Usually what we do with big things like this is we'll plane around it, leave the wood in there. I mean, leave the metal in the wood while we're planing and then take care of it by other means, whether it be a sander, grinder, you know, whatever, whatever you have in your arsenal. So you can see here by the striations from the planer, that we planed here and then we made another pass and planed here right up against it and then we made another pass right here we planed up to it and stopped moved over came up here brought the planer in and continued on down to the end we brought the planer back Moved it over, started another pass, 
got up to it, stopped, moved over, planed up here, moved the planer over again, then brought it back this way until we got close to it, and then continued on to the other end. If you do that two or three times, you get to a point where you can start back here at the beginning, plane right on by it keep going and you leave it there now you can see that that's raised up a quite a bit it's over three eighths probably closer to half inch above the surface so what we'll do is we'll come back in with the grinder and grind that out now it's flush with the surface and we didn't tear up our planer head didn't rip all the cutter head, all the cutters off the teeth. I mean, the cutters off the, the planer head. Now we have the slab is totally flat on the top. So that's all we gotta take care of. And I'm gonna do that right now. It used to be a real pain in the butt to leave the metal in the wood like this so that we could grind it off after we got our slab flattened because we didn't have electricity at the mill so it involved taking the slab over to the shop dragging out some extension cords finding the grinder doing the grinding then taking the slab back out to the mill to lay it back down on the tabletop and flatten the other side but now with the advancements in cordless tool technology it's super easy we just take a cordless grinder out to the mill put a big battery on it, grind away. We don't use anything special to grind, we just use a flat disc on the grinder. But you don't have to use a grinder. You can use a belt sander or a disc sander, whatever kind of whatever kind of means you have in your shop to be able to grind that piece of metal out. Oh man, look how good that's looking. I can't believe you can see that metal strap, the lag bolt, even the threads on the lag bolt. This thing is going to look so cool when it's done. I love this kind of stuff. Oh man, that's hot. Now if you do do this, you got to be careful because you create a lot of sparks. And we deal with wood. So you're going to have to cool it off. Look at that walnut. Holy crap. You're going to have to clean it off. You're going to have to keep it cool. And you're going to have to pay attention to your sawdust pile. And I'll show you why. This is why you want to pay attention when you're grinding this and creating all them sparks. You got to pay attention over here to your planer shavings. Because this could be all bad so make sure you got some water around when you do this looks cool as can be though that's going to be in the finished top that's not oh my god we gotta get some water on that fire's out but Check out that pretty walnut. Woo! This is gonna be a sick table. I'll keep you guys updated as we get going on it. Gets further along. I just wanted to give you that pointer of being able to plane a slab without having to dig the metal out because that makes for quite the cool feature. I love how it's got the barn the lag bolt and the threads that's gonna make a killer tabletop that should make for a pretty awesome conversation piece in the top of this table thirteen foot long approximately 48 inches right there and over there it's like 36 in the middle 
Just gonna get book matched together. Should look pretty good. But don't catch your stuff on fire when you're grinding it out. With sawdust all around from playing in, don't catch your stuff on fire. Oh man. Let's get a little bit of water on this so you can see what it's gonna look like when there's finish on it. Oh, just wait, this thing's sweet. How's that for some nice walnut? Fortunately for us, we get to work with some of the best walnut in the country. Clara Walnut and Bastone Walnut in this area that we're in is just superb and we get some pretty big slabs that we get to help work on whether it be for us or whether it be for a customer it's just always awesome the colors are always beautiful the ribboning is always beautiful and there's always just so much going on with the grain i hope that you've enjoyed watching this video but more so, I hope that you learned something about flattening slabs that might have metal in them with your Lucas planer. The carbide inserts for the Lucas mill planer attachment, while they cut very, very well, they just don't like impact with metal objects. So hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this can save you some cutter bits and hopefully your planer works very, very good. We're going to start posting more Lucas Sawmill tips and tricks videos here on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so that you can be notified when we do post a new video so you can check out what kind of tips and tricks we have for you for doing your setup or planing or slabbing or whatever the case may be. At this time I'd like to say thank you for watching our video. Give us a thumbs up because I know that this video was pretty good. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. By the way, make sure you leave your questions you might have about your Lucas Mill in the comments below. We'll get them answered for you. See you on the next one.